My friends, welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. I hope you all are doing well. For this adventure, everybody, we are out here at Lone Wolf Mountain, and this is going to be a hot tent adventure. Wait until you see the tent that I have with me today. There's a potential this is going to be very sweet. From what I've seen on YouTube, this is the very first video with the Palm Ollie Dome X6 tent. This is a six person dome tent. This is a hot tent. And folks, let's don't waste any time. Let's go ahead and let's set this up real quick. Right there you have it everybody, the Palm Ollie Dome X6 or 6X, whatever they call it, has been set up. Considering the fact that this is a very large tent, the overall setup process was not bad. Talking about this tent being large, oh yes, it definitely is. On the inside of this tent, I can fully stand up. This tent features three doors, three vents. We have the stove jack over here. With the Dome 6, there are a few accessories that I did not purchase with this tent, and that's because it was going to slow down the shipment of this shelter. So I decided I would just purchase those later. For now, let's get the shelter in and let's set it up and let's use it. Speaking of the accessories, there's a floor that buckles in and there's also a tent enter that will keep the bugs out. In the future, I will get those accessories in, but like I said, I didn't want to delay the shipment of this tent. So far, everybody, I have to say I am very, very impressed with this. This tent is massive. I mean, it is absolutely humongous. I could tell this is a very strong tent. Quite a bit of thought went into this. And the thing is this, the weight on this, isn't terrible. And the price on this, considering the size of this tent, is not terrible either. Don't get me wrong, it's expensive, but it could be a whole lot worse.
for the most part everyone camp has been set up everything on the inside is primarily set up we have the cot i have a sleeping pad on top of that speaking of which that is one very rare sleeping pad that sleeping pad is called the Marpad. It was made by Thermarest, and they did a limited run for the United States Marine Corps. And check that out. It has Marpad on it. It is super sweet. It is incredibly rare, and if you can find one, it's going to cost you a bloody fortune. I purchased that back in the day when Thermarest was manufacturing those, I would say for about 50 bucks. Now they go for about $500. With this hot tent adventure, I'm not going to use a wood stove, I'm going to use a gas stove. And there's a very important reason why that is. We are currently under a burn ban. It is so severely dry here that all outdoor burning, it doesn't matter if it's in a stove, it does not matter, it is forbidden. This morning I woke up to a report that less than 20 miles away from my house was a massive wildfire. I guess apparently in the night it burned 200 acres and it's still burning right now. I really hate to say this, but luckily the wind direction is blowing away from my home, so I'm not in any danger. I really hate to say that. That, you know what I mean? Because somebody else is in danger. But it is what it is. Luckily, later on tonight, going into tomorrow, we will receive some rain. Up to a quarter inch is forecasted currently. That, of course, is going to help, but it's not going to solve any issues, unfortunately. It is so dry, everybody. Dry as a bone. Even though we've been receiving rain just about every single week, it's just not adding up to a whole lot. And this is common sometimes in the fall. If it is ever going to be dry here in the mountains of North Carolina, it is this time of year. Because of that, we will fire up the gas stove tonight and we will stay nice and warm. As it stands right now, temperature wise, we're looking at roughly 45 degrees. It's really not that warm, but the sun's been out and I've been working, so I've been rather hot. But as it stands right now, it's getting kind of cloudy and I'm about ready for my sweater. I tell you what, let's go ahead and let's make some coffee real quick and we'll continue chatting.
It is now coffee time. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. As far as the actual time goes, it is now 3.30. It's cooling down just a little bit. In truth, it really does feel good. It does. Not too warm, not too hot. I call it perfect. A little while ago, everybody, I heard a fighter jet screaming through the area. Over the last couple of weeks, they've been doing a ton of training out this way. I've mentioned this before in previous episodes. Lone Wolf Mountain is underneath a military flight training path. Because of that, all sorts of cool military hardware flies over here. Anyways, earlier today when I was coming out here to Lone Wolf Mountain, I pulled off on the side of the road because I was going to text my buddy back. And so, I'm sitting there texting and I hear, Whoosh! I look up in the nick of time to see this fighter jet bank and pull up out of the valley. It was freaking awesome. So I'm standing there and I was just like, yeah! But then here comes another one, right? Same thing, treetop level, screaming, bank super hard, right? Here comes another one and another one. It was super cool. <laughs> I have goosebumps right now just talking about it. <laughs> That was flippin' awesome. And it was just pure luck that I was able to see that and experience it. In a blink of an eye, it was over. It happened that fast. It really was sweet. Usually they don't do any training in the afternoons. It's only certain days of the week that they do it. When I was a kid, they would do these training missions all the time, just about every single day. But eventually, so many people complained that they stopped doing it. So now it's like, I think it's on Tuesdays and maybe Thursdays, something like that. The other day, a friend of mine asked me if I'd seen any of those YouTube channels that are like ran by women where they're like scantily clad. Sometimes they're camping, sometimes it's like bushcraft, but most of them deal with like the outdoor sort of thing. I answered the question honestly, yes I have. I'd say over the years I might have clicked on two. Anyways, my friend was asking me what my thoughts were on a channel like that. And I thought about that and I say more power to them. I'm a firm believer in doing anything that you want to do as long as you're not harming anybody. Obviously, those women, they know exactly what they're doing. Their views are amazing. With that being said, would I like for Susie to have a YouTube channel where she was dressed like that? Um, no. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> she could pull it off, though. Susie's beautiful. She's stunning. Anyways, everybody, I am going to sip on this just a minute more, then I'm going to get my fire ready for tonight. I did mention that I'm not going to have a wood fire tonight, but we will have a gas fire tonight. That is the only thing that we actually can have at the moment. It is completely safe and it will have to do until it rains. This is the stove that I'm going to use for this adventure. This is a propane powered outdoor stove and it's completely safe. Susie and I, we use this at home on our deck all the time, especially in the fall. It is so nice to sit out there, just listen to the birds, watch the hawks, 
and now we have eagles in the area, which is pretty cool. Anyways, because it's so dry, this is gonna work well here at Lone Wolf Mountain. When it comes to this tent, I already mentioned that I wasn't able to purchase the accessories such as the floor here, so I went ahead and made my own. So what I've done is this. I've taken two very large AquaQuest tarps and I've laid them down. On top of the tarps, I have a canvas tarp. This tarp has been treated with permethrin, which is an insecticide. It will kill all bugs that come into contact with it. As you can see here, I've placed my cot on top of it. That way I don't have to worry about spiders crawling up, ticks, and so on. And that's because this is not 100% sealed up. Bugs can get inside of it, but thanks to the way that I've set this up, I'm not concerned. As I'm sitting here next to this gigantic Palmali tent, I can't help but think about the humor in it all. The humor that I'm talking about is in regards to testing out another Palmali product. You may know this, you may not, but a long time ago, I cost Palmali a ton of money, tens of thousands of dollars, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. What I'm talking about is the Palmali Stove Hut 70 tent. This is what happened with that tent. I purchased it because I wanted to test it out. It looked cool. I set it up, I did a rain test, and it failed miserably. I discovered a flaw with that tent. At the same time, other honest YouTubers were reporting the same thing. Dishonest YouTubers were not reporting it, even though the same thing was happening to them. They were selling the products. Anyways, to make a long story short, I issued a warning concerning that tent, and I told people do not buy it. 
The company responded, said that I was a liar, and started a firestorm on their social media pages. They backtracked, they apologized, they offered to write me a letter of apology, and I told them to shove it. I told them that I didn't want it, but what I wanted was that tent to be taken off the market before they killed somebody. It's a hot tent that leaked like crazy, it was terrible. So they pulled it from the market, redesigned it, and that's why we have the Stove Hut 70 version 2. They were really off and so were the other YouTube channels who had been promoting their products, selling their products, and not telling you all what was really taking place. They too were very angry. I don't care. I don't work for them, I work for you all. The humorous part is that before I purchased this tent, I reached out to Palm Ollie and I asked them for a review sample. And strangely enough, I heard nothing. Absolutely nothing. That is exactly what I expected to happen, so I purchased the tent and here we are today. Because of all that drama and the nonsense from the company, and the disgracefulness of the company, you may be surprised that I'm reviewing another product from them. This is the thing, folks. I don't hold grudges. I don't get angry. There's absolutely nothing anyone can say to me that's going to piss me off. I simply don't care. When a company gets upset, they can say anything they want to. I'll stay calm, cool, collective. I'll explain the situation. I'll show you the facts. The end. Anything else, I don't care about. What I care about is sharing information with you all. I give it to you straight. The good, the bad, the ugly, that's it. That is how I am wired. I just don't care. It's like I said before, I work for you all, no one else. This is really nice, everybody. The temperatures are in the 40s. Like it's cool to my back, warm over here. It's perfect. As far as the rain goes, it is supposed to start in the middle of the night. Who knows exactly when. I wanna say the last time I checked, it said showers by 10 o'clock tonight, steady rain by 4 a.m. By the way, everybody, before I forget, I have two shout outs to give. Greg, thank you so much for all of the hazelnut coffee. You all should see my gear room and the boxes of hazelnut tasters nasty. It's really funny. Buddy, thank you so much. Gene and Joyce, thank you so much for the book. I really do appreciate it. You two are awesome. We are now inside of the tent. It is basically 10.30 and it has just begun raining. At the moment, it's fairly light, but it's just getting started. I went ahead and fired up the Cupid heater from Covia. More than anything, I was curious whether or not this heater can heat up a tent of this size. And I can tell you all, it certainly can. I'm very impressed with this little heater. 
it is very, very warm inside of this tent. Unfortunately, I don't have a thermometer with me. I forgot it this time. I had to put some more batteries in it after the last trip and I forgot it. You'll have to take my word on it. It is plum hot in here already. My plan is not to spend too much time in front of this heater. It's already getting late and I want to get up early in the morning. That really is how I like to do things. I like to get up super early and work all day and usually into the evening. Susie says I am a workaholic. Is that true? Is that accurate? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's pretty funny. A few episodes back, I did a hot tent adventure with a gas powered heater. After that episode, I received an email from a guy who was telling me, trying to tell me, that every heater puts out the same amount of CO and it doesn't matter what the fuel type or what the stove type was. And I had to write them back because this blew my mind. That is simply not true. That is not accurate. He was trying to tell me that every heater is exactly the same as far as the CO output. The amount of CO released from different fuel types is different and the same applies for stoves. All stoves are different as far as efficiency, the way they burn that fuel, the combustion process. This translates to varying degrees of CO release. So, no, not all stoves are the same. <laughs> oh, folks, the internet. You gotta love it. Anytime that I bring up a viewer, a comment, an email, whatever it is that I receive that I'm talking about, I'm not making fun of anybody because I don't do that. What I'm trying to say is this. If you don't know what you're talking about, don't talk about it. I'm a firm believer in that. If somebody asks me a question that I don't know, I say, I don't know. I don't pretend to be an expert on things that I know nothing about. Anyways, folks, sounds like it's coming down pretty good at the moment. That means I'm going to sleep really, really good tonight. My friends, this is really nice. This tent almost feels empty because like there's so much space inside of it. I have a table, a chair, the power bank, this cot, and there's still a ton of space left over. What I really like about this is that you can stand up in it. There's that much space. Not bad, my friends, not bad. I'm going to go to sleep, everybody. I will see you all at 6 a.m. Good night. Good morning, everybody. Time, eight o'clock. I decided to sleep in. It was really dark this morning. Dark and rainy. It's still raining, but it's really, really light at the moment. I fired up the heater this morning. Feels good, feels really good. I don't know what the temperature is, 40 something. It's not terribly cold, but nonetheless, this heater feels incredible. And yes, there's enough ventilation in here. It is amazing to me that a heater this small can warm up a tent that's this large. That's impressive, everybody. Talking about using a heater inside of a tent, inside of a vehicle, common sense reigns supreme. You do have to have ventilation. I'm not going to mention this in every single video. There's always someone in the comments, someone shooting me an email saying like, you didn't point out the ventilation, you didn't talk about the ventilation. I don't have to, and I'm not going to. I'm going to treat every single viewer like they have some intelligence, like they have some common sense. I cannot go over every single aspect of using a product in every single video. I refuse to do it. Imagine what those videos would be like. They'd be like a hundred hours long. Common sense, everybody. Common sense, I believe in it. 
If you have it, you'll do great. If you don't, you're in trouble. I'll tell you what, everybody. Since it's warmed up in here, let's turn this off and let's get the stove going. Let's make some coffee. The coffee is fantastic, everybody. Cheers. As you all can hear, it's raining pretty good at the moment. It's coming down. So far, I have not seen any sort of leaking inside of this tent. Not a single drop. And it has rained all night long. Now, not all that hard, but still counts. For me, one point of interest is the stove jack port here. Oftentimes, when it comes to a hot tent, it will leak around that. But so far, so good. There's no leaking. After I turned off the camera last night, I ended up watching a movie, Cliffhanger. That is one of my most favorite movies of all time. I absolutely love it. Along with uh, Dante's Peak. Both of those movies, I love for some reason. Cliffhanger still holds up. It's great. Sylvester Stallone, awesome. Can you believe there's going to be a sequel to that movie with Sylvester Stallone? That guy is like 80 years old and keeps going. More power to him. That's amazing. In a previous overnight adventure with a hot tent, I used a heating pad and I had many questions basically asking why I didn't use like an electric blanket. This is why. A heating pad consumes very little energy. On low, you can run one of those for a very long time and you won't drain your battery bank. Electric blankets are so much bigger, they consume so much more energy, they will quickly deplete power stations and so on. That's why using a heating pad is so efficient. 
All you need is just a little bit of heat. You do not need to be fully covered. You can have a small heating source and you will stay super, super warm all night long. You can use that trick inside of a tent or your vehicle as well. It really does work. As far as the time goes, it is now 9.17, and everybody, it is time to wrap up this adventure. This was a fantastic trip out. If you have enjoyed this adventure, hit the thumbs up. It helps a lot. If you want to join the Wolf Pack, you can support the channel on Patreon, on YouTube. You will get insider information before anybody else does. You can ask questions, get answers, and so much more. Thank you so much for joining me for this trip. Take care. Be well. Strength and honor. Stay safe, everybody. Cheers.